everybody, it's Eric Johnson from Air Tate Throws Nation. Today's video we're gonna talk about is the 70 foot discus PR. Now, last year we had an athlete who started out at 101 feet, and that means when he rolled in, he wasn't throwing even 100 feet, he was throwing about 80, 85 feet, and when things were going well, 90 feet, and he was ready to abandon the discus. Long story short, said be patient, and several months later he threw 171 feet in a major competition, made it to the state meet, became one of the top throwers in the state of Arizona that year. So having gone from 101 feet, 271 feet is a very proud accomplishment of mine as a coach and again extremely proud of the athlete now here's the thing what was the core thing that helped that happen we have a few things but number one was setting up the chain reaction clearly and by that what we mean is the very first thing that we're gonna do and we want to get our, our people to understand who are watching these videos you have to get on balance and so what we teach with the throwing chain reaction is how to isolate the positions the first thing you're gonna do is set up with our pillar one and that's setting the whole tree trigger of the whole throw. So any throwing motion we do has a setup, a chain reaction setup. And so pillar one is simply that setup. Now, again, we talk about our core objectives and we set the orbit and we're setting separation and we're doing these different things. And if you would like to know exactly what we do and how we train it in depth, click the link below for the throwing chain reaction system. What we're going to talk about in this video is by setting up that trigger and setting up the proper sequence, we got the athlete on balance. Once you're on balance, learning to throw is so much easier and that's where we break down our six pillars of the throw so remember if you're off balance one of the core things you're going to do it's going to be very difficult for you to get better at your throws and if you're you're not going to improve five feet or ten feet you might get lucky and catch that little throw but if you want to start hitting that 25 30 35 40 foot type of jumps balance is most critical and that's what we set up in our trigger one so real quick we're just going to kind of talk about as you demo and as we look at some throwers you're going to notice the commonality of the elite throwers in the world. Everybody has a different style, and this thrower that I'm talking about and showing you in this video, he has his own style. He did some things, in my opinion, that were very similar to Piotr Malachowski, which is a huge compliment to a young thrower, and in how this kid could naturally feel the delivery and strike the discus. It was very impressive, and it, one of the reasons it helped him improve. So if you look at these videos of this athlete in the beginning, you're gonna notice how he's very off balance. He didn't understand his basic sequencing. He didn't understand how to put together a trigger. So the one tip we're going to talk about is we've got to clean up motion. We've talked about this in some other videos. And again, inside our program, we go through all those details you need to really isolate and perfect these positions. So again, looking at how to get on balance, one of the core simple things was is controlling the hip and creating that separation stretch reflex component to be able to feel that type of a position. When you're a thrower and you're falling into the throw and everything's here, you're gonna fall across the circle. And if you're falling across the circle, you're not going to be able to improve. So if you're consistently here now, the, some of the fixes for that is to over rotate and try to step in to stay on balance. You actually are more on balance when you do that, but that's gonna teach you to be rotational. And it's not teaching you how to move around what we refer to as pillar two, dropping into our pillar three to move and create speed across the circle. So again, we, just when we look, we've got pillar one, pillar two, pillar three, four, five, six. That's how we break down the throw. In each of those pillars, we're going to train position. So what did we do to get 70 feet? Number one was get them on bounce, and number two was start teaching the motor patterns to develop how to move the feet at each pillar, how to move the arms, how to move the upper body, and start to teach the timing and understand that chain reaction philosophy so that you understand that everything and every problem that is occurring in a throw is actually being or happening or occurring as a result of what you did prior to. So this is why our pillar one one, this is one of the most undercoached parts of we feel in throwing. So we want you to get that right. Click the link below if you want some information on how to dive into all that stuff and learn more about how the throw works. And you too can pick up those massive distances. 20, 30, 40 feet is pretty standard in our club year in and year out for the last nine years. Remember, get on balance, learn the throw. Those are going to be the keys to big throws. Thanks so much for watching and we will see you on the next video. Everybody, it's Eric Johnson from Air Tate Throws Ace. In today's YouTube video, we're going to talk about rotational shot put. It is really, in my opinion, it is the absolute future. If you look at the men's level, top 32 men in the world this year, the 